Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got another review. Today we're gonna to be reviewing this 2008 Chevy Corvette. So this C6 Corvette is actually the base model, but it's basically a 3LT, so it has, I guess, like all the options available. And it is very tastefully modified by the owner. Just a few mechanical mods and aesthetic mods here and there that honestly, I think, go really, really well together. You can see, like, I guess the all black kind of theme, like the murdered out theme that the owner is going for. So yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna uh, jump right in, talk about the body first and then get into more specs about this car so this corvette is actually finished in this gloss uh black paint from factory now a lot of people have mixed feelings about black paint on cars i personally love it i think it looks very mean and aggressive even though it is an absolute pain in the ass to take care of and wash and keep clean but that being said it does look really well along with the black wheels that i'm going to talk about a little bit more in a minute but yeah, so this gloss black uh, paint color was actually one of eight exterior paint options for this specific year for the Corvette. Uh, this owner also has a 5% tint on the side windows as well as the rear window that again goes with the murdered out theme really, really well. And also in the front here, you can see the owner's custom like halo LED headlights from Oracle Lights. Basically, he bought the lights and then him and his buddy actually did a, a couple little touches to them to actually like make it, I guess, his own and really customize it. So yeah, that being said, guys, overall, I just, in general, I really, really like the look and overall design of the body of C6 Corvettes. I think they look very sleek, very aggressive, also very aerodynamic as well. But yeah, now I'm going to be moving on and briefly mentioning some uh, factory body specs for this car. So this 2008 Corvette actually came from factory with a length of 174.6 inches, a width of 72.6 inches, a height of an even 49 inches, a wheelbase of 105.7 inches, and a curb weight just over 3,200 pounds at 3,217 pounds. So one other little, I guess, slight aesthetic mod done to this car is actually the owner the current owner didn't do this himself the previous owner actually did but you can tell the turn signals are actually plasti dipped unfortunately a little bit's actually coming off right there and also the back um i guess marker lights or whatever that's plasti dipped again it goes it goes with the murdered out look very well i in my own personal opinion the owner did say he wants to take them off soon because you can tell over time the plasti dip does wear and it looks a little bit gray but yeah, in my own personal opinion, once the owner actually gets that off, I think honestly, if you if just put like some vinyl tint, like 5% tint to match the windows, the entire car would look really, really good. All right, guys, so now I'm actually going to be talking about the wheel setup that this owner does have on this Corvette. Now, honestly, in my opinion, 
I really, I really like this car. Like I said before, I like how it's put together, but probably my favorite feature of this car is this wheel setup. As you can see right off the bat, it is a staggered wheel setup. It looks really good. I like the overall like black wheel design with the chrome lip around it. So it looks great and it's also very, very functional as well. So that being said on the front here, the owner actually has forged FD skinnies, which are basically 17 inches by five inches. And on the back, he actually has wheels off of a C5 Z06. The dimensions are 18 inches by 10 and a half. Now in the rear, these uh, wheels are actually wrapped in uh, like semi-slicks, semi I guess, like street slicks, whatever you want to call them. They're basically Toyo R888s and their dimensions are 305s by 35s by 18. So again, they look really, really well. I like the like overall fitment. It's got a little bit of like a poke fitment but it's very, very functional as well. The owner says it really helps the car hook. There's little to no wheel spin on it. Now in the front here, you do have skinnies and these wheels are actually wrapped in m and Race Master tires and the dimensions are basically 185 by 55 by 17s. So the only thing that I guess could kind of be a problem is the skinnies up front. But again, it's kind of like a semi-drag setup, semi-drag, semi-street setup. Uh, the owner doesn't really like daily this thing a lot. He says he tries not to um, drive it in the rain that much. So yeah, that's definitely one thing I'm going to keep in mind while driving this car, because when you do drive a car with uh, like skinnies on the front, you do just want to be, I guess, a little bit more aware of cornering and turning because they're not going to turn as sharp as uh, tires like front tires that have a little bit more width behind them. Now I did also just want to mention that underneath this wheel setup is actually the stock C6 uh, brakes. The owner said that they, this uh, C6, C6 Corvette actually does come with those drilled rotors from factory. I don't know the exact rotor dimensions, but it basically looks pretty like, I guess, around 12 inch rotors, nothing too crazy, but they are drilled from factory, which is pretty cool. And it looks like dual piston calipers in the front with a, a single piston caliper set up in the back. All right, guys, so now I have the hood popped on this vet and underneath the hood, you can see the 6.2 liter two, two valve per cylinder naturally aspirated V8 that actually powers this thing. So yeah, this engine is a LS3. It's very, very popular, at least here in America in the car enthusiast community here in, the, in America, because this specific LS I know is one of the more cheaper LS engines you can get. And it's very, very re reliable. You can make cheap power and it's actually reliable when put under boost and when pushing out higher power numbers. So that being said, this specific Corvette from factory makes 430 brake horsepower at 5,900 RPMs and 424 foot-pounds of torque at 4,600 RPMs from factory. So that being said, this owner actually has Corsa Extreme long tube uh, ceramic coated headers on this car and basically it goes from the headers, it goes no cats. And then in the very back, he does have factory Z06 mufflers. And in the front here, he does have a Vera Ram in intake. You can see right there. And this car also is custom tuned. So it is tuned for the mods. It's making good power. That being said, he actually hasn't had it on a dyno, so he doesn't know specific power. Um, he said his one friend told him it was like, it's probably like around 470. He says it's probably a little bit, little bit less than that. I would have to say with the mods that he has, it's probably around give or take a little bit higher than 450. But yeah, this car is only slightly modded. It's not completely like built even though it is only slightly modded it is still it is still making fantastic power it does have the semi selects on the back so it definitely does hook and book and there is a lot of tuning potential on this platform now that being said this uh, engine actually does deliver its power through a six speed automatic transmission for this specific car i believe the trans is the same in both the automatic and the manual c6s i could be wrong and the fuel economy numbers are actually very, very impressive for this engine, considering that it is a bigger V8. It actually has a combined average of 19 miles per gallon. All right, guys, so now looking into the interior of this Corvette, I did just want to mention that it, this specific VET, even though it is the base model, is a 3LT. So that being said, 
comes with the full leather interior. I believe the owner did say it has different like track modes, driving modes, stuff like that. It has a heads up display, ma magnetic uh, ride. And also in here, you can see it does have the heated seats and the owner actually did put in this different like head unit or whatever. But yeah, I mean, overall the, um, the Corvettes, like for pretty much most Corvette generations in general, they are very famous for having a driver focused dashboard, driver focused interior. And that being said, honestly, like I don't say I'm not impressed with this interior, but this interior, yes, it is dated. I still think it's pretty awesome, but this center console, it is tilted a little bit towards the driver. But if you actually watch the review on the C7 Z51 Corvette that I actually did, I'll leave a link to that on the top of the uh, video right now. But the, in, in the C7, the, the interior is a lot more driver focused. I believe it has like a pillar here. Everything is a lot more slanted to you. Now, that being said, I, I don't, it doesn't really, I don't care that much about it. But you can definitely tell that the C6 interior is a little bit dated. It is from the, I guess, early 2000s. And they didn't really update it throughout the years of the C6. So yeah, that being said, guys, I'm just going to fire this thing up and then take it for a little drive and show you guys my initial reactions. Alright guys, so now I'm actually driving this Corvette and I have it in like the sport or manual mode, whatever you want to call it. And one thing that is kind of weird about this car, and I noticed this when I got in it, on both sides of the paddle shifters both say plus on them. But basically how it works is that you, you can pull back either side and when you pull back, it actually it downshifts and then when you push it in, it actually upshifts. And you can do that on either side. So you can literally just shift like with one hand on the wheel which is something that I actually haven't really seen before. So now I have a little straightaway here. I'm in first, gonna probably bring it up right around 20 and then hit it. Oh my God, yeah, it hooks. It hooks really, really good with the back tires. There's no wheel spin at all. And I kind of pedal that too. I didn't just like dump it. Because again, this is my car, so I'm not just gonna like rip it. But I did pedal that and then I kind of went full throttle towards, I guess once it got towards like the middle of the RPM range, like the power bend. But yeah, it hooks very, very well. Now with these skinnies, I have to say, it does affect the drivability of the car a little bit. Yeah, like this car is actually, it's on stock suspension, so it's not like, it doesn't have lowering springs or coilovers or anything like that in it. So I, I am being conscious, I'm not actually scraping the car, but it sounds like you're scraping. I don't know, it's weird to describe, just taking, taking corners in the skinnies is a lot different than, I guess, like taking corners in the normal width front tire. It still does handle very, very well. It sounds amazing. I actually have the window down for you guys because I feel like that that helps pick up the um, engine noise a little bit better. But yeah, like I said before, it's got long tube headers, no cats, right to uh, an X-pipe, and then in the very back, it has the stock factory Z06 mufflers, the axle back mufflers. So those axle back mufflers are pretty much the only thing that's, I guess, stopping this from being a straight pipe. But it's not, it's not deafening loud, but it definitely is pretty loud and it sounds, it's got a really, really nice tone to it. So here we got a little tiny straight right here. Oh my God. Yeah, there's a little bit delay. There's a the slightest amount of delay with the paddle shifters, but when it gets into gear, it definitely lets you know that it gets into the higher gear. And like I said before, there's like no wheel spin whatsoever. Now, one thing the owner actually did point out to me, I don't know if I got it on the walk around. I know I didn't talk about it, but um, he actually pointed out on the driver's side back like fender uh, or back quarter panel, whatever you want to call it, he actually, the paint and everything is actually kind of like, like cracked or whatever and it's kind of like bent in a little bit because one time he, he hit this thing on the parkway and the car actually squatted and with the semi slicks in the back, it actually rubbed against the back. So there's a little part in the back um, driver's side quarter panel where you can actually see the fiberglass with, you know, no paint because it's chipped or whatever. But I mean, besides that, 
the overall body is in great shape. So yeah, I mean, for a 2008 uh, car that has a actually that has 114,577 miles on it to be exact, I mean, it's in great shape. Uh, I know I said before a little bit when I was talking about the interior, you can definitely tell that it's dated. And when I do actually stomp on it, you, you do get, I guess, like a little bit of like the rattling going on in the interior. And even if I pop this back into drive, like you can tell like the um, the plastic on the um, shifter or whatever is a little bit loose. But I mean, you're gonna get that with an older car. There's just no getting away from that. But yeah, now I put it in the drive, it, it upshifted into a higher gear. And it's actually, it's super quiet. Like you can definitely daily this thing, maybe with different tires on it. Um, you know, maybe with like all seasons, you can daily it like all year round. I'm gonna downshift a little. in a lower gear and it kind of like bucked me a little I'm sure you guys saw but I mean besides that the drivability of this thing is fantastic like I just popped it right back in the drive and it, it just cruises very nice now another thing too is when you do step on it in drive just like any other automatic car um, the delay of it being in drive is actually going to be more than the paddle shifter so the paddle shifters do have a little bit of a delay but when you're just in drive there is even more delay plus it, it doesn't I'm pretty sure the owner said that it actually doesn't um, rev up all the way when it's in drive so that's another thing you do have to be conscious of this is a great car it's a very fun car and it does have this kind of sunroof but it's also a target top so you could take this off unfortunately right now it is extremely hot where I'm at so we're not gonna take the top off but yeah that being said to the 5% tint on the windows when they're up it does help you out a lot. The AC works perfect. Um, so yeah, if, if I have the windows up, if I well, if I roll the windows up, I turn the AC on, it would be cold in here in no time. So that is another thing that you do look for in something that you're gonna, I guess, daily. Yeah, guys, I mean, another thing too, when you're taking the corners, again, even though it has the semi-slicks in the back and the skinnies on the front, it still handles corners very well. The whole magnetic ride, it actually feels very, very similar to, I know this sounds stupid, but it sounds very, very similar to the C7 that I also filmed on the channel. Yes, I know that they're both, this C6 and the C7 are both like modern Corvettes, but I, what I'm trying to say is that both of these Corvettes do have the, um, the magnetic like ride or whatever, and the suspension. I actually don't know the whole mechanics behind that, but it does, it stays really, really planted to the ground. So yeah, in this car, um, I was just driving in in sport mode, but it also has touring modes. Uh, yeah, just touring mode and sport mode. And then if you press the little traction control button, it actually doesn't just turn off traction control. It also turns off stability control and I guess all the other limits. So you could really just open this thing up to its fullest potential. Now I was driving in in sport mode, but I didn't have the traction control off. But that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing any more pulls in it. I'm done for today. Now I'm kind of just getting the overall like driving feel of this car. Now one thing I really do like about the Corvettes, and this was also, again, similar to the C7, you can see the fenders. I guess just the overall body design, you can see the fenders up in front of you. So there's not really, and the A-pillars are smaller compared to other vehicles. So there's really not a lot of blind spots. Now that being said, the visibility at the back is pretty terrible but um yeah you can see like where the nose is kind of like in this car so parking with this thing again daily driving with this thing should not be a problem for most people now one thing that i actually don't really like i know a lot of people do like this but it actually has a heads up display which kind of like i guess projects your um your tachometer as well as like your speed and what gear you're in when you're in the manual mode it, it projects it like it's in front of the car uh, the first car that I actually drove with one of those heads-up displays was another Chevy. It was the Chevy Camaro RS that I actually reviewed on the channel. And then the C7 and then also this Corvette. So it is, uh, I guess, feature that's in most modern-day Corvettes. But, and I know a lot of people like it. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not the worst thing in the world. I just, 
me personally, I don't really like something being like projected right in front of you. I know it can be a little bit more convenient, but that's, again, it's just my own personal opinion. Right now, I'm kind of getting like real nitpicky. I'm trying to find something wrong with this car because it is a very, very good car. All right, guys, so that's pretty much just gonna wrap up today's uh, review. If you stuck to the end of this video, definitely be sure to leave a like on the video. It actually helps me out a lot. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, but yeah, until the next one, see you guys.